Good morning. I'm Aya Wimala, and today is November 2nd. We had, I think, it was our first freeze last night. So that's, um, that's left us with today a beautiful, crisp day outside, and it really feels like fall now. <clears throat> so we've made it through Halloween, and now we're moving into November. We finished our uh, pilgrimage, and what I wanted to do today, and possibly some long uh, more days, is to do some meditations from uh, Bhikkhu Analyo, and his he has written a book and has an online course you can take on mindfully ch facing climate change, and. I've done uh, his course with a group, with, the, with our meditation group in Elkhorn in Wisconsin. And uh, this seems very appropriate for these days, especially with uh, the conference in Glasgow, Scotland on climate change. And we know we're, we're, we have to make some serious changes in the way we live and uh, a lot of people aren't very optimistic about the ability to do that. But his book, from a Buddhist point of view, is a beautiful way to study climate change and how we can deal with it, how we can, uh, what kind of social action could be appropriate to really understand from a Buddhist perspective what our relationship to the earth is and relationship to all the uh, all other beings and uh, even comparing that looking at that in terms of how how we see our relationship to the earth and to other beings um, I'll read just a little bit on the back because this book offers a response to the challenge of climate change that is grounded in the teachings of early Buddhism and mindfulness meditation based on employing the teaching of the Four Noble Truths as its main framework. It places facing climate change within the context of the Eightfold Path and provides detailed meditation instructions on how to build up mental resilience and balance. So, I know the interfaith group that I'm, uh, I'm part of here in our community is having, uh, we're changing this year from having our uh, kind of November um, Thanksgiving service, sort of gratitude service in, in a building to having it outdoors. And it's going to be in a really beautiful uh, county conservancy area and we're going to be planting acorns. So that's this Sunday, and uh, I can, I'll put more information on Facebook about that, and everyone is welcome to it. But, but the theme is gratitude, and also the theme is working with the earth and what we can do to heal the earth and our relationship to the earth. So. I'll be leading a very short meditation there, but I've been thinking so much about, as, I, as I'm sure all of you have, about uh, the situation our planet is in and what we're doing to it and wondering can we actually help the situation and how we can do that and how we can relate to it from our Buddhist perspective and ways that can help us with um, the perplexing issues that arises and sometimes a feeling of hopelessness or a feeling of depression or just a, a, a kind of despair over the condition of the world. So it's a this is a very good book and the if you I'll see if I can find the online course but he has the meditations in the in the book as a section on its own, and uh, I wanted to. He even has a structure for working with them, 
and uh, I'll tell I'll tell you before the the contemplation that he encourages from the very beginning is one I've been thinking about a lot the last week or so is contemplation of the earth and it's contemplation of the earth element which the four elements of course are uh, earth water fire and wind and these the meditations with the four are part of this book working with them and he uses of, of the elements he uses contemplation of the earth we can do some of that today and what i did want to share with you too he presents he presents a, ba a basic program for how to work with these meditations so um, let me read what he says and then we can do the meditation and I'll read his his directions and how he suggests we can work with it so the meditations presented here in the book it, he suggests we could proceed through these meditations step by step. One way would be during a four-week period, finding time each weekend to study one chapter and during the ensuing week to practice the corresponding meditation on a daily basis. The meditations presented here in the book are based on extracts from more comprehensive practices that have considerably more to offer. The combination of these extracts yields a visible form of meditation that fits the challenge of facing climate change and at the same time has a liberating potential. Nevertheless, in addition to cultivating such meditation on a daily basis, it would be opportune to explore the relevant complete practices during a time of retreat. Building on the daily practice of the meditation presented here, a time of the year set apart for silent retreat could be used to cultivate contemplation on all four elements in the way described in the discourse uh, in the suttas, even to explore the full scheme of the four establishments of mindfulness. Other opportunities for deepening the practice would be to implement the complete instructions on mindfulness of breathing in 16 steps, or else to develop all of the four divine abodes, the Brahma Viharas. Such full exploration will provide additional depth to the meditation presented here and strengthen its daily practice. So working with the body, and let's do today um, contemplation of the earth. Now, because some of you may not be familiar with this, I'm going to read his instructions. Um, and he also suggests that, well, he'll explain it in the writing. So I'm going to read it, and it's some interesting background. And it's uh, well, you can sit and as as I read it, we can do it together as a practice. So let's begin. Contemplation of the earth. In order to cultivate insight into the close relationship between the body and the earth on a personal level. Meditation practice can begin with a focus on the earth element. Although such an approach is inspired by the contemplation of the four elements described in the Discourse on the Establishment of Mindfulness, it lacks the analytical edge of this exercise due to taking up only one of the four elements. For exploring the earth element in daily meditation, the recommended approach is to use a body scan. And we've done lots of body scans together. Such a form of practice is not described in the early discourses and only seems to have come in existence in later times 
Its purpose is to provide a grounding and bodily presence, making it easy to collect the mind and avoid that it succumbs to, succumbs to distraction. In actual practice, after having taken a moment to settle in by just being with the presence of the body in the sitting posture, the scan will begin with the head and from there proceed to the neck, shoulders, hands. Wait, here, this is the order. And we've done this one. Uh, and this, this was, uh, I learned these, most of the body scans that I use are the ones that Bhante Analyo teaches in his course, The Four Foundations of Mindfulness. The scan can begin, and now I'm just reading and we can do this when I finish reading. But you can, as I'm reading, and you have some familiarity, you can be practicing as well, okay? The scan can begin with the head, and from there proceed to the neck, shoulders, arms, hands, back to the torso, into the hips, the legs, and feet. At first, it might be preferable to take the limbs separately, but eventually these can be covered at the same time. And we've done this body scan frequently here. The meditative task is simply to be aware of a particular part of the body in the knowledge that there is the internal earth element, in the sense that there is some degree of solidity in this part of the body. When cultivating this meditation, there is no need to strain in order to feel distinctly and with total precision the presence of solidity in each and every part of the body. Obviously, the body is solid. There is solidity in each part of the body. Given that this is already clear, it is not necessary to struggle in order to prove that as you meditate. It suffices just being aware of the body and knowing that there is solidity, which is sensed only to the, group, to the degree to which this naturally manifests. Having completed the body scan can then lead to sensing the solidity of the ground below. wherever this is in direct contact with the body. This is a way of transitioning to becoming aware of the external earth element. Even sitting on a chair on the highest floor of a skyscraper, there definitely is solidity below that reaches all the way down to the earth. Awareness can note the sense of gravity and allow the body to relax into that gravitational pull, letting all bodily and mental te tension sink into the ground. Having in this way come into contact with the earth below can lead over to a perception <clears throat> of the extensiveness of the earth in all directions. This can be done by first becoming aware of the frontal direction in the acknowledgement that the element of solidity felt below the body extends to the front into the far distance. Proceeding from the front to the right, then the back, and finally the left, eventually a perception of the vastness of the external earth element can arise. The body can feel firmly grounded in this experience of solidity that extends into all directions. In fact, it is an integral part of it. The perception of the body as an integral part of the earth can be further strengthened by way of the following reflection. Brought in briefly and only to the extent to which, to which this supports the meditation without leading to mental chatter. The body depends on a constant supply of solid food. 
and is thereby in a relationship of exchange with the external earth element. It is entirely dependent on the earth for its survival. The same holds not only for the earth element. The body also needs the water element in the form of beverages, the fire element in the form of protection from extremes of temperature, and the wind element in the form of breathing. The oxygen breathed in comes from plants that live on the surface of the earth and in the ocean. The last reflection can lead over to becoming aware of the process of breathing. Ideally, this is done while maintaining whole body awareness. In other words, instead of cultivating an exclusive focus on the breath, the process of breathing can be experienced as part of the whole body seated on the earth. With every breath, an exchange takes place with the plants on the earth. For the body's survival, this is even more vital than its food supply. The practice of the body scan can serve as a convenient tool for adjusting to the degree of distraction of the mind. When the mind tends to wander frequently, repeated and swift scanning can help to counter the tendency once, sooner or later, the mind becomes willing to settle down, the time has come to give attention to the breath. I love this sentence. Once, sooner or later, the mind becomes willing to settle down, the time has come to give attention to the breath. Throughout the relationship between the body and the earth, the dependency of the body on the earth for its survival can remain as the central theme. And then the next would be contemplation of, of the mind, cultivating compassion, contemplation of impermanence. So these are some specific meditations that he describes that can help us uh, in understanding our relationship to climate change, uh, what we can do, and what we, how we can deal with our own uh, fears or anxiety or despair over the situation that we find ourselves in, and what we can do to help. So why don't we practice now? Yeah, we can do this. And I'll, I won't walk you through everything, but I'll just remind you. And I'm taking this, let me just mention again before we start the meditation. Mindfully facing climate change. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, Biku Analeo. So it's Biku, and Analeo is A-N-A-L-A-Y-O. He is a he, uh, he's in residence at the Bari Sitter Center in uh, Massachusetts, and he teaches, uh, he's, I took his class, Four Foundations of Mindfulness, at the very beginning of uh, the pandemic, when I, well, when I realized it was going to last longer than two or three weeks, and it was a wonderful class, and before that, I have... Uh, I took his course that's available online. So if you go to the Bari Center, I think you can find him. And uh, under under there, it's, he's in, in residence and teaches there. And um, you can get this book I'm online, I'm sure, for free. You can get it a PDF format. And I think we are getting closer and closer uh, to all feeling a personal connection to what's going on with the earth. So why don't we do this? We have, we can do this uh, kind of a quick. Well, let's begin. I'll just remind you. Thank you, Steve. 
<laughs> You're always right there for me. There's, uh, Steve has put the, there's the, the uh, link to the book. So we're going to first do that quick body scan in the way Analio teaches it. So as we're doing the body scan, the only task, as he says, for this body scan, be aware of a particular part of the body. The, the only task is simply to be aware of a particular part of the body in the knowledge that there is the internal earth element, in the sense that there is some degree of solidity. And uh, for instance, we know the bones and the cartilage in our body, those are definitely very solid. But we also have, uh, you know, our teeth are solid. So that solidity, but then again, our, you know, our skin holds us in, so we're, is our skin like the bark of a tree? But uh, there's a degree of solidity throughout the body. Uh, there's so much liquid in the body, but we can we can be aware, and he's saying we don't have to be specific about the part, but the feeling. There is some degree of solidity in this part of the body as you move through that part of the body. No need to strain in order to feel distinctly and with total precision the presence of solidity in each and every part of the body. And each part has solidity but this is just to, we're scanning to be aware of the earth element in the body. And he's defining earth element as solidity. Uh, you know, it can also be, include the minerals and the amount of things like minerals that are in the body that are also in the earth. So, so this solidity is sensed only to, wit, to the degree to which it naturally manifests. Don't become, don't overthink. Don't become analytical with this. Just feel it, okay? So let's do that and just, I'll just suggest the movement so we kind of stay together where we are and you can feel the solidity in the way, in the, <clears throat> in the awareness that you have of it. Don't overthink it. Don't become analytical. Just be aware of solidity in this body. So start at the top of the head and move down. We're scanning all the way from the skin, all the way in. all of the internal parts of the body as well. So move down through your head, your neck, into both shoulders. Now move down each arm, upper arm, lower arms and hands and fingers. Now back to your upper torso. And move down from your upper torso, your chest spine in the back so we take remember we're just cutting through the entire body and observing move down into your abdomen move into your hips and pelvic area down through the upper legs both legs
through the knees down into the lower legs. Into your feet. Now just come back to the breath and then now I'll explain to you the next. Having completed the body scan, we'll go on to sensing the solidity of the ground below, wherever this is in direct contact with the body. So if you're sitting, it will be might be your feet if you're in a chair. If you're on a cushion, it will be your bottom and the bottom of your legs. Wherever the earth is in direct contact with the body. This is a way of transitioning to becoming aware of the external earth element. Even sitting on a chair on the highest floor of a skyscraper, there is definitely solidity below that reaches all the way down to the earth. Awareness can note the sense of gravity and allow the body to relax in that gravitational pull, letting all bodily and mental tensions sink into the ground. So be in your meditation posture still and feel your body making contact with the earth. So unless we're, unless you're floating in the air, you are making contact with the earth. Through the carpeting, through the rug, through the floor. Maybe through your basement, but eventually you get down to the earth. Having come into contact with the earth below can lead over to a perception of the extensiveness of the earth in all directions. First, become aware of the frontal direction in the acknowledgement that the element of solidity felt below the body extends to the front into the far distance. So be aware of the earth element, the earth in front of you. Be aware of the earth element to your right. Be aware of the earth element to your back. And be aware of the earth element to your right. All of these directions extending out to the edges of the earth. These are the four directions and we're practicing radiating out our awareness to the earth element on all, in all four directions. You may have that perception of the vastness of the earth element. We can develop that perception of the vastness of the earth element. The body can feel firmly grounded in this experience of solidity. Now, stay in your meditation posture. We'll wrap this up soon. The perception of the body can be further strengthened by some of the, the following reflection. We'll bring it in briefly, but 
we don't want it to lead to mental chatter. So you're sitting in the, the perception of this great earth below us. We're standing on the earth and it extends in all four directions around us. This body depends on a constant supply of solid food and is also then in relationship of exchange with the external earth element. This body is entirely dependent on the earth for its survival. Not only for the earth element, the body also needs the water element, the fire element, and the wind element in the form of breathing. The oxygen breathed in comes from plants that live on the surface of the earth and in the ocean. And our last part for this meditation is to become aware of the process of breathing. Allow the process of breathing to be experienced as part of the whole body seated on the earth. With every breath, an exchange takes place with the plants on the earth. For the body's survival, this is even more vital than its food supply. It's, it's the air we breathe. And this practice can help us keep coming back to the body. It can help eliminate some of the, the chatter that our mind does. I want to read some of his words to end it. The practice of the body scan can serve as a tool, an easy tool for adjusting to the degree of distraction of the mind. When the mind tends to wander frequently, repeated and swift scanning can help to counter this tendency. Once, sooner or later, the mind becomes willing to settle down. The time has come to give attention to the breath. Throughout the relationship between the body and the earth, the dependency of the body on the earth for its survival can remain as a central theme. So if you can continue to sit, you can continue to practice this, this awareness of our connection with, with the elements of earth in our bodies and with our dependence on the elements to, to uh, keep our body going. I think this can be calming for us. And also, as Vante Analio says, this ground being grounded on the earth allows us to keep coming back, to feel connected, to feel connected to, to all, all beings, to the earth itself and all the beings living and surviving on this earth. I think it can help with any, if you're feeling sadness <clears throat> over the plight of the earth or despair. This practice, I think, brings us back into our relationship with the earth and it might allow us to develop these other meditations such as compassion and uh, seeing what we can do and moving from a place of sadness or anger or despair over the earth situation and moving to a place of calm and compassion and right action.
So thank you for practicing with me and may everything that we do and think and say be for the benefit, not only for ourselves, but for the benefit of all living beings and for our earth. Thank you.